Hello everyone, this is me Dilruba Kiyam and in this video we are going to see Comprehensive Mobility Plan. So what is Comprehensive Mobility Plan or CMP? What are its features and objectives, outcomes and the process of CMP formation? So let us see what is CMP or Comprehensive Mobility Plan. So a recent rapid urban development in India has resulted in transport problems such as traffic congestion and increase in the traffic accidents. Although the national and state governments have made substantial efforts to improve urban transport problems, uh, problems have been ex exacerbated by the rapidly increasing number of private vehicles. So the increase in private vehicle is our major issue. Uh, and we know local government have an existing urban transport planning for local areas, but this is insufficient or uh, specifically they are having some problems. The main problems are inadequate information and incomplete analysis. So although many proposals have been submitted by local bodies for Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission, Fund to implement various urban transport projects, including mass rail transit, bus rapid transit, flyovers, roads, etc. Some proposals contain inadequate information and incomplete analysis. Due to this, uh, they cannot justify the need of uh, improvement, which in turn rejected the project itself. And the second a problem we are facing is the proposal of this particular projects are not integrated with the existing land use pattern. We know in transportation engineering, when we plan a city, when we plan transportation infrastructure, they will cause the accessibility or they will become the reason for accessibility and mobility of the people. And this will affect the land use pattern of that city or whatever be the study area. And due to the change in land use, activity patterns may change. And this will again create another demand for more transportation infrastructure. So we can say transportation infrastructure causes the land use change and this land use change again causes need for transportation infrastructure and so on. So our transportation planning will go on and down like a cyclic process. So in order to meet all these problems, in order to prevent or we can, uh, in order to escape from this problem, Ministry of Urban Development encourages cities to prepare a comprehensive mobility plan, which is called CMP, as a part of long-term urban transport strategy provided for a sustainable improvement of people's mobility in metropolitan region. So what is CMP? It is a long-term strategy or a transport sector come investment program document for the desirable mobility pattern of the study area. So the main objectives of CMPs are to provide a long-term vision and goals for desirable urban development in each city so they will in CMP we will define the vision and goal of the uh, project and it will illustrate a basic plan for urban development which should include list of proposed urban land use and transport measures to be implemented within a time span of 20 years or more so we are uh, going to plan for more than 20 years which should include a proposed land use and transport measures. And the third objective is to ensure that the, pro the program uh, CMP which we are provided is the most appropriate, sustainable and cost effective program that can be provided for that particular region. So it ensures the most appropriate, sustainable and cost effective implementation program is undertaken in the urban transport sector. So the, let's see what are the main features of CMP. 
the first one is optimization of mobility pattern of people and goods rather than vehicles in cmp we prefer a people mobility than vehicles we the main focus is on people and the second feature is improvement and promotion of public transport non motor vehicles and pedestrians as an important transport mode in indian city we know uh, most sustainable manner of transport mode is walking cycling or public transport so this non motorized vehicles and pedestrians and the public transport should be get into the important transport mode of any city so improvement and promotion of this one is the second feature of cmp and it will also provide a recognized and effective platform for integrating land use and transport planning and cmp develops an urban transport strategy that is in line with national urban transport policy so uh, the major difference between conventional planning uh, conventional trans urban transport planning and comprehensive mobility plan that is our cmp is in conventional plan the focus is, is on vehicles in conventional plan we will provide more facilities for vehicles to accommodate in road we are trying to accommodate more and more vehicles in roads for that we will provide them flyovers we will widen the existing roads or we will provide new roads and due to this when the facilities are increasing the more people will switch to their private vehicles or more private vehicles will get into the street and this will create again congestion and it will cause to demand for more transportation infrastructure and which in turn not addressing the mobility of people actually it is addressing the mobility of vehicles rather than people so in comprehensive or conventional urban transport plan vehicles are more important than people people mobility so uh, when we consider a city which contain number of vehicles we cannot say that much number of people are moving maybe some vehicles have only one person so it create a difficulty for pedestrians or cyclists to use that street and which in turn uh, reduce their usage or we can say which in turn reduce the uh, pedestrians and cycling people so this was the feature of conventional urban transport plan but whereas in comprehensive mobility plan the focus is mainly on mobility of people so here the urban transport problems are addressed in terms of people so it promote better use of existing infrastructure and it always try to improve the uh, public transport pedestrian facility and non motor vehicle facilities so it also emphasize the integration of land use and transport development so this one the comprehensive mobility plan is more sustainable one than a conventional urban transport plan so let us see how can we uh, go to as comprehensive mobility plan so there are few steps in order to make comprehensive mobility plan first one is identification of scope of the cmp and second task is data collection and analysis of existing urban transport environment so for that first we have to review the city profile and review the existing transport system and transport demand survey should be conducted and review of land use pattern these three should be taken care of and then we will analyze the existing traffic and transport condition of that particular city so this is how we do the uh, data collection part and analysis of existing urban transport environment and second third step is development of integrated urban land use and transport strategy that is first we will prepare prepare a vision and goal of cmp and we will Uh, see a futuristic transport network scenarios and a future urban growth scenario then we will evaluate the urban land use and transport strategy in view of all these things 
So the third step is to develop integrated urban land use and transport strategy. For that, we have to prepare a vision and goal, and we will uh, we have to see the future transport network scenarios and urban growth and evaluation of these. Both will help us to integrate the transport sector with the urban land use. And the fourth step is development of urban mobility plan. For that, in transport system improvement, we have to consider the public transport. How can we pro provide more improvement in public transport and uh, road network and non-motor vehicle facilities? How can we uh, provide non-motor vehicle facilities? Where all can we provide these facilities? And we have to manage the mobility. And we, we should find the regulatory and institutional measures, fiscal measures, and comprehensive mobility plan measures and national urban transport plan objectives should be taken care of while developing an urban mobility plan. And the last step is preparation of implementation of the pro program. So prepare, preparation of implementation of the program, social and environmental con condition to be considered and we will prepare the project and implement it and then we will consult the stakeholders and we have to keep on update and maintain this comprehensive mobility plan so this is an overall view of comprehensive mobility plan process and the key outcome of the comprehensive mobility plan is first one in strategic structure uh, we will get a long-term strategy which contain proposed project and we will prioritize which, which project in long term strategy uh, which includes statement of vision goals which is preferred form of urban growth in proposed project list of proposed measures and projects should be mentioned uh, for a for a time span of 20 years or more and then we will prioritize a project list of priority projects with project sheet should be provided so this is the main key outcome of cmp so we can conclude that to alleviate all the existing and possible future transport problems and to facilitate safe and efficient movement of people it is essential to prepare a comprehensive mobility plan that provides a long-term vision and mobility solution for the citizens. Mm -hmm.